Welcome back to Reliable Sources. I'm Brian Stelter. Donald Trump is heaping praise on WikiLeaks, while the Clinton campaign condemns the ongoing publication of stolen emails from Clinton chairman John Podesta. WikiLeaks is publishing new emails every day. Now, despite Trump's claims that the media is ignoring the trove of emails, uh, this kind of document dump is irresistible to journalists. It is providing a glimpse into the inner workings of Clinton's campaign, confirming a lot of what we thought we knew, and showing efforts to control and shape favorable news coverage. So what are we learning? How newsworthy are these really? Now, joining me now is someone very familiar with reporting on leaked and hacked information, Glenn Greenwald, the co-founding editor of The Intercept, uh, who helped break the Snowden leaks wide open. Uh, this, of course, was, was a number of years ago. And Glenn, your relationship to WikiLeaks has changed. How so? Well, ironically, WikiLeaks was one of the most vocal critics of how we reported on the Snowden archive. They were indignant about the fact that we didn't just take it and indiscriminately dump it all into the Internet, right. but instead curated it, tried to protect people's personal information. And to this day, not only us, but all news organizations that had documents still haven't disclosed all of them or even near all of them because of the effect it would have on innocent people. So we very much believe that when you get a large... Uh, archive of information, your responsibility as a journalist is not just to dump it uh, to the internet for anyone to dig through, but to protect people's privacy, to protect people's mm -hmm. reputation, and only publish that which is in the public interest. Now that WikiLeaks has dumped these Podesta emails, journalists are scouring through them. Is it ethical to report on stolen information? Not only is it ethical, it would be incredibly unethical if journalists ignored it. Hmm. Many of the most important stories in the history of American journalism come from stolen materials, whether it be the Pentagon Papers, whether it be the Manning and Snowden files, whether it be sources that take classified information and give it to Donna Priest at the Washington Post so mm -hmm. she can uncover CIA black sites or the Bush warrantless eavesdropping program. So many of these acts that lead to the best journalism are grounded in illegality. No journalist has the right to say, I I'm only going to report on information as long as the source is morally upstanding. No real journalist would think that way. Well, watching uh, Fox News coverage of this leak this week, this stolen trove this week, I've gotten the sense they believe there are bombshells. Let me put on screen a few examples of what Sean Hannity said really stood out to him. Uh, examples of media collusion uh, between the Clinton campaign and journalists. CNBC's John Harwood offering advice to the Clinton campaign. The New York Times in one case allowing edits to quotes of Clinton. The Boston Globe pumping up the campaign. Univision pressured to attack Trump, campaign bragging about media support, and Donna Brazell receiving a leaked town hall question. Are these isolated examples, Glenn, of, of journalistic improprieties, or are they evidence of collusion? I think they're examples of at least some of them. Some of them are just the sort of normal standard back and forth jockeying between campaigns and, and journalists. Others, though, are, I think, examples of serious impropriety. I think Donna Brazile leaking, um, getting a hold of a town hall question and only giving it to the Clinton campaign and not the Sanders campaign is an example of cheating. It's Let's journalistic Let's put that headline up on screen. I wrote about this earlier this week on CNN.com. Uh, and just to explain to our audience at home what happened here, what seems to have happened here, this was a CNN TV1 town hall back in March, a Sanders and, and Clinton both on stage. There's an email in this document dump that shows uh, then CNN controller and DNC Vice Chair Donna Brazile emailing uh, a question that seems to be a town hall question to Jennifer Palmieri at the Clinton campaign. The next day, a version of that question was read on stage at the CNN TV One town hall. Now, CNN has just flatly denied ever sharing any question. And to be honest, when I've, I've been inside just one of these debate preps, I've never, I can't imagine a question leaking out. Then again, somehow it did. Uh, and so CNN suggested that TV One, Roland Martin, its partner, was maybe the person that sent the question uh, to Don in Brazil. He, he hasn't really responded to that. He sort of denied it. But the then she's is, the one who passed it to the Clinton campaign. That's right. And the point is, it's still a mystery. You know, no, we haven't gotten an exact answer to how the heck this happened. Trump has taken this to say, oh, well, Clinton's being given debate questions, using the plural, using questions, right? So I feel like he's taking a grain of truth and turn it into a lie. Well, so let me just say a couple of things. Um, first of all, there's this massive transparency disparity in this election because we have unprecedented transparency into one campaign, the Clinton campaign. She has released her tax returns, financial disclosure documents for the Clinton Foundation. We read her emails as, State Dep as Secretary of State, not all of them, but many of them and now the hack into her Clinton campaign. On the other side, you have almost no transparency into Donald Trump and his business practices and mm. his campaign because he won't even release his tax returns, which is incredibly hypocritical for him to act as though um, there's these scandals being hidden when he's hiding essentially everything about himself. Mm. That said, um, I think there are extremely interesting aspects of these emails, which maybe to political junkies or reporters seem like business as usual, but to the ordinary person, it sheds real light 
on the kind of games that get played, the kind of manipulation of public opinion that even if it's common is still really disturbing and therefore deserves lots of attention. When you say manipulation of public opinion, what are examples you've seen in these emails of that? And there's, there's things where the Clinton campaign talks openly about the fact that their public messaging is completely at odds with what Hillary Clinton really believes about ways to um, make Sanders supporters into believing that they're getting concessions that in reality are inconsequential. There's an email that talks about how the regime of Qatar, one of the most repressive regimes on the planet, um, was promising to give one million dollars to the Clinton Foundation for Bill Clinton's birthday in exchange for five minutes of meeting time with him. So this is the kind of stuff that Clinton partisans will say, oh, it's no big deal, it's not shocking. But that's not the standard newsworthiness. Lots of things that are newsworthy are not shocking. I don't think it's shocking that Donald Trump is a serial groper of women, but it's still extremely newsworthy. And that's what I would say is the same for the kind of trade-offs and kind of money transfers and media manipulation that's taking place as, as evidenced by that email archive. And yet, when I was in the car yesterday listening to news radio, all I heard about was Trump. I didn't hear about Clinton. Do you think conservatives are right to say there's been an unfair imbalance in the coverage of the WikiLeaks uh, revelations versus Donald Trump? So I think it's, there's two sides of that. I think it is simply the case that the political and media elite in the United States are virtually united behind Hillary Clinton and against Donald Trump. Um, but the other side of that is that Donald Trump is so off the charts in terms of convention and what's normal and what's acceptable that even if it may not be justified, it's just inevitable that you put your eyes on this sort of explosion mm. and this extreme amount of deviation from what's normal and pay attention to it and talk about it more than a sort of conventional campaign like Hillary Clinton's. Off the